Our hands and just come on, let's celebrate the goodness of the Lord. You can do better than that. Amen. Let's appreciate us, uh, Minister Mercy, for uh, a ministry well executed. Hallelujah. Amen. You may take your seats. Hakuna liye mwagadamu Hakuna kama wewe Hakuna liye mwagadamu Hakuna liye mwagadamu Hakuna aliye sulubiwa Hakuna Kamba wewe hakuna aliyesu lubiwa hakuna mungu kama we hakuna aliyesu lubiwa hakuna kamba wewe hakuna aliyesu Hakuna Mungu Amen. We want to thank God so much for the opportunity to share the word of God. I want to greet you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, our brother Emmanuel. Yeah, you know, I consume music. Yeah, I'm a music guzzler. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We want to thank God so much for those of you that have come, those of you that are visiting, maybe for the first time. It's a great honor to have you. Those of you that are on, uh, I mean online, we want to welcome you. My name is uh, Apostle Isaac. It's a great blessing to be here. This is summer. People do travel. They go sightseeing. But we want to thank God that we are even trusting the, that the Lord is going to, um, you know, take care of those that are on the road. And by the way, many of you should actually change your birthday month to July. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I understand the July babies are many. I actually even discovered that uh, one of our spiritual sons, uh, uh, Apostle Job, is also celebrating his birthday in July. I think there's something about July. Yeah, and I understand the July babies, I think, are going to cut a cake outside there or something like that. I don't know what's there. So, hey, amen. We want to thank God. I want to continue uh, with the series that I started some time ago. And like I said... I do not know why the Lord gave me this message, but it is because I believe there are many people, either individually or maybe in your ministry or in your business, you might be fighting against the spirit of San Balat. I just don't know why I cannot go out of this. There's something that God wants to do, especially in our lives, to open our eyes, uh, even as we continue to trust Him for the breakthrough that we have. And I'm not going to lay... The foundation of the book of Nehemiah, we have already gone into it. We have discussed a lot of things. And today I want to look at Nehemiah chapter 6, the first 14 verses. I believe they are important. And today, in fact, I cannot remember the last time I shared this message, but today I want to share on a message entitled, Dismantling the Spirit of Assassination. Dismantling the spirit of assassination. We are unmasking the Sanballat spirit. And for those of you who probably this is the first time you are hearing about this, please go to our YouTube, Fountain Gateway Church, or to, uh, you know, to, our, to our Facebook, and go back and look at the series that we have started on unmasking the Sanballat spirit. In fact, I am so excited about our upcoming prayer rally. Because as a community, we are going to go to war for the nation of Kenya. Please help me remind somebody next to you that all the roads on July 30th lead to the prayer rally. Tell them that. All the roads July 30th lead to the prayer rally. Let me see by show of hand. How many of you, how many of you, how many of you are, I mean, you love Kenya? with every fiber of your being. The only way that I'm going to get convinced that you really love Kenya is to see you at the Jewish 
uh, you know, community center. We are gathering there as a community on July the 30th. I do not want to scare you, but some of you have been taking it easy, thinking that things are very, very easy in Kenya when it comes to the upcoming general elections. But I want to tell you, if there is an election that has a lot to do with spiritual warfare, this is it right there. Yeah, on the ground, there are so many things that are taking place. A lot of confusion. And I believe we are going to be talking more about that, but we only have two weeks to prepare for that. I want to encourage all of us to make sure we create time. It's going to be on a Saturday, the whole of the afternoon, we are going to be there as a community. And I believe the Lord is going to bless us. And I believe we are also going to unmask the spirit of St. Balat from there. Amen. So today we are talking about dismantling the spirit of assassination. And we're looking at Nehemiah chapter 6. I'm going to be brief this afternoon. And I believe we are going to be blessed together. Let's read the first 14 verses of Nehemiah chapter 6. This is what the Bible says. Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, Gesh, uh, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there was no brick left in it, though at that time I had not hung the doors in the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent me, saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Uno. But they thought to do me harm. I want you to notice how verse 2 ends. It says, Whatever Sanballat, and his friends were suggesting to Nehemiah their plan was to do what? To do him harm. So as we talk about the spirit of assassination, I want you to bear that in mind. They had a plan to actually take him out. So I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? But they sent me this message how many times? Four times. Look at somebody next to you and tell them the spirit of the enemy is determined. Now you need to speak like you are in summer and some of you are wearing very nice Kenyan attires. I can see that. Tell them the spirit of the enemy is determined. Now tell them and you need to be more determined. They sent them this same message how many times? Four times. And I answered them in the same manner. In other words, they wanted to assassinate him and they were serious. They sent the message four times. And he answered in the same manner. Verse 5, then Sanballat sent his servants to me as before the fifth time. Somebody say the fifth time. You see, the reason why I'm having you say that it is because I am helping somebody who is wondering why am I fighting a spirit that looks like it doesn't want to give up. In fact, if many of us knew that the enemy was so determined to do what he wants to do, we would be more determined and more equipped to actually stand our ground. So, San Bala sent his servant to, to me as before the fifth time. And this time, he has put something on paper. It's called a letter. So, St. Ballard says, If Nehemiah pretends not to be understanding what we are trying to do here, let us put something on paper. Let us serve him with a letter. How many of you know that if someone sends you a letter, you may ignore it at first, but if it's still there, you are still somehow going to read it. And so, with an open letter in his hand, now it was written, it is reported among the nations, and Geshem says that you and the Jews plan to rebel. Therefore, according to these rumors, you are rebuilding the wall that you may be their king. 
And you have also appointed prophets to proclaim concerning you at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. Now these matters will be reported to the king. So come, therefore, and let us consult together. Then I sent to him, saying, No such things as you say are being done, but you invent them in your own heart. For they all were trying to make us afraid, saying, Their hands will be weakened in the work, and it will not be done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Verse 10, afterwards I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehitabel, who was a secret informer. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. And let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night, they will come to kill you. Verse 11, and I said, should such a man as I flee? And who is there such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Verse 12, then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. For this reason he was hired that I should be afraid and act that way and sin so that they might have cause for an evil report that they might reproach me. Verse 14, my God, remember Tobiah and Sanballat according to their works and remember the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. I just want to speak a little bit about dismantling the spirit of assassination because it could be that God gave me this message. It might not be for everyone, but maybe for very specific people who are going through a battle because they have decided and they have embarked on building the wall. I want to remind you that among the three groups that came back from captivity so that they may rebuild the temple and rebuild the city, Nehemiah's group is the group that actually encountered the greatest resistance from the enemies of Israel. And I gave you the reason I told you it is because the enemy is not so worried if the temple is going to be rebuilt and if the city is going to be rebuilt. As long as there's no wall of protection. As long as there's no defense. And I submitted to you that that is exactly what the enemy is after in your life and in my life. He's not bothered about so many things that we might kind of think are very important. As long as there's no wall. As long as there's no protection. There's no resistance. As long as there are no boundaries. As long as he can come in and out the way he wants. And I told you even churches. Churches fight battles against demonic powers depending on their ability to build the wall or not. If the enemy thinks that there's no wall and he sees there's no wall, it's a church that has no regulations, people live the way they want, you know, there's no definition of what is good and what is bad, he can come in and out, he's not going to bother to really attack the church. In fact, he might actually encourage many to go there. But if it's a church that is so conscious about building the wall, then he's going to fight like Nehemiah and his group were fought against by Tobiah and his friends. Let me just describe and explain a little bit about the spirit of assassination for you to understand. Because I told you Tobiah and his friends used different weapons and different strategies to try to stop the project of building the wall. Just like many of you, probably there's something you are doing and maybe the enemy has been hindering you from doing it. It could be something to do with the family. Maybe in your 
entire family, there is an area where you have never gotten a breakthrough, but you are the first one to arise in that area. And you are beginning to make headways. You realize that Sanballat and his friends, at first they did not take Nehemiah and the group seriously. Actually, they started mocking them. But the Bible says when they realized that serious work was being done, and they realized that the Bible says the guts of the war were closing in. And they realized, Haya, Kumbe, these people were serious. This person was serious. Kumbe, this business was still standing. Kumbe, this ministry was still standing. Then they began to apply different tactics. And I want to remind you, I talked about conspiracy last time I spoke, which was last Sunday. And now here we are looking at the spirit of assassination. What is assassination? Assassination is to kill an important person in a surprise attack for political, religious, or celebrity reasons. Let me repeat that definition. Assassination is to kill a, an important person. Everybody say an important person. Let me see by a show of hand, how many of you believe that you are an important person? I see some hands that are raised up, but they are raised like quarter away. How many of you believe that you are an important person? Okay, how many of you believe that you are a very important person, you are a VIP? Raise both of your hands. Okay. So assassination, first of all, is not carried out against people who are not important. And I'm here to tell you the reason why some of you are fighting some battles, it is because you are important. Let me help you. The devil does not waste his arrows on somebody that is not important. The fact that you are being attacked the fact that you are struggling with something in your life is an indication enough to tell you you are an important person. So, assassination is the attempt to kill an important person in a surprise attack. And we know that we read in the news about assassinations of political figures. Some of them assassinated because of religious reasons and others because of celebrity reasons. In other words, it is somebody who does not want you to actually step in your light. It's someone who does not want your star to shine. It's someone who does not want you to step into your importance. And I want you to know this, that some of you probably, until you began to think about the call of God over your life, the enemy was not interested. Do you know that as long as you're not thinking about doing what God has called you to do, you are, your importance is not going to kick in and the enemy is not going to be bothered with you. But some of you, the minute you started saying, okay, I want to roll back the spirit of poverty out of my family. I want to remove this reproach. I want to embark on this business so that I may become financially free. I want to get into this ministry. I want to get back on my place. If it is something significant, something important, something that will change your life and the life of those around you, then welcome. If you are building that kind of a wall, don't be surprised if Sanballat is going to target you. Let me also submit this to you that assassination is usually carried out by people who have unsuccessfully tried to bring you down through other ways. In other words, they have tried to bring you down through other ways. By the time Sanballat and his friends are even contemplating of, on assassination, Coming up with a plan to exterminate Nehemiah, they have tried all other ways. They tried discouraging them. They tried all kinds of things. We have talked about them. 
And some of you, the enemy has tried to bring you down from other platforms, but it appears like you are tough cookie. And so now he resorts into only one thing. He says, now, if this person continues the way that they are continuing, they are really going to you know, cause trouble. So let us try to wipe them out. Assassination is usually carried out by people who have tried to silence someone, who have tried to bring down someone through other ways, and it appears like they're still going on, so they say, let us take them out. You have heard of stories where snipers were actually hired to take out on some people, because if they continue the way they are continuing, it's going to bring trouble. So after Sanballat had been unsuccessful in the different ways that he had tried to use to discourage Nehemiah and to stop the project and to discourage the Israelites, he now opted to go for assassination. In the verses that we have just read, I want to introduce to you three types of assassination that he tried. And maybe some of you probably you might have experienced that as you continue to build your wall. I don't know what your wall represents. Maybe it is your marriage. Maybe it is your business. Maybe it is your ministry. I don't know where you are building up a wall. And the wall is a threat to the enemy. The wall is a threat to the powers of hell. Do you know that some of us, the enemy knows if we lived well and had our bills paid and we were happy and we were strong, we would actually do a lot for the kingdom of God. So what the enemy tries to do is to make you every time on what is called a continuous war zone where you are fighting this after you win, you are fighting that and you are fighting that and you are fighting that. And I know there are people that have been in warfare almost continuously for years. But I am trusting God that as we unmask the spirit of San Balat, God is giving you some muscles where you are going to push back against all forces of darkness and you are going to be well on your way to do what God has called you to do without any struggle. I want to declare again here, anybody who is Hearing my voice, you are a remnant. If the devil was not able to take you out through COVID and other things, this is not the time that you are going to be taken out of your path. God is about to strengthen you. God is about to anoint you. God is about to do things through you that are going to bring generational blessing and breakthrough. The first type of assassination that we see here is called physical assassination. Physical assassination is where Sanballat actually tries to take you out physically. Let me pause there and make a statement and say this. The best asset that you have in your purpose on earth is your body. The best asset that you have in your purpose on earth is your body. Look at three or four people next to you and tell them your body is important. Oh, you're not speaking like someone who believes it. Tell them your body is important. Do you know why the enemy fights you with the spirit of sickness. Sickness is actually a kind of a slow death. Our bodies are important. The Bible says your body and my body, they are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If you want to know that your body is important, let your body stop breathing oxygen. And tell me if God has any instrument or vessel to use on earth. He doesn't. The Bible says that the heaven were created for the angels. But the earth has been given to men. And your body as long as it is functioning on earth. 
It is giving God an opportunity to expand his purpose. That is why I want to advise you anything that is targeting the welfare of your body, you need to take it seriously. Because your body is very important. We used to preach a gospel some time back that showed that your body is not important. But your body is very important. Your health, your strength, your finances, your existence on, I mean, you know, on earth is important. Because God has an instrument that he can use on earth. I want you to know that is why heaven is after your prosperity. Is after your health. The Bible says, beloved, I pray that you may prosper and be in good health. Even as your soul prospers. It is the will of God that you live a good life. That your body continues to breathe oxygen. That your body continues to be energetic and healthy. That you are able to pay your bills and live well. Heaven knows if that can happen, then God has an instrument to use. God has a vessel to use. Everybody, touch your body. Lay, lay your hand over your chest and say, this is a very you know, important instrument. That is why when Gideon ni lazima tujue how to take care of the temple of God. Yeah. That's why even when we talk about dieting, you know, eating, you need to know what you are putting into that body. If some of you, the only place that you take your body is through the drive through no wonder you are becoming older than your age. That's why when people sing happy birthday, you don't want them to Go to the next verse that says, how old are you now? Let me prophesy and declare this. Your body is going to be healthy and strong. You will live a good life because when you do that, you are giving heaven a vessel that heaven can use. That is why you need to fight against anything that wants you out of this earth before your time. It's called the spirit of premature death. It's called the spirit of assassination. They want you to get out of the scene before you establish your purpose on earth. That is why every time I am traveling, I come against the spirit of assassination. I usually break the plans of the enemy to take me out before my time. That is why every time before you get behind your steering wheel, you need to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus and you need to declare, I'm going to work and I'm coming back in one piece because I have a long life to live. If Jesus tarries, I will be here to do the work of God. I will be here to establish the kingdom of God. So they said, they said, Hey, Nehemiah, you need to stop building the wall and come down here. Let us meet in one of the villages in the plains of Ono. Look at somebody next to you and tell them the plains of Ono. Yeah, they say, let us meet at the plains of Ono. Remember, he was up there building the, you know, the wall, so he needs to come down and go to the plains. Anything that wants you to move from up there to a valley, you need to understand that spirit is not for you. If God has placed you on a wall, you need to stay up there. Hey, look at somebody next to you and tell them, I'm going to stay up there. I am going to continue to build. He say, come down and let us consult. Let us discuss. Watch out to he mambo. But Nehemiah says, I perceived that they wanted to do me harm. It's called the spirit of assassination. That is physical assassination. The meaning of honor in Hebrew is something that is vigorous, something that is associated with strength and wealth. So they were luring Nehemiah 
to come to the plains of honor. In other words, to come to something that looked like lucrative. Something vigorous. Something wealthy. How many of you realize that the enemy knows what you are looking for and if he can get you from the wall by using it, he's going to use it? The enemy is not going to tempt you with something that you don't like. He knows that you are looking for something vigorous, something nice, and so he's going to lure you out of your place of calling into a place of strength and a place of attraction so that he may assassinate you. Can I suggest to you, many people have been assassinated. Their destinies have been assassinated by being lured into the things that they love most. Samson was a lover of women. How many of you know that he really loved the women? He could fight to get them. But he was lured on the lap of Delilah. So, Sanballat wants to lure you to lay your head on that which you love most. If it is the women, you're going to find yourself on the lap. And the Bible says she had easy time cutting off the hair. I don't have time to tell you how many hairs have been cut just because people were lured from the wall and they were assassinated before they could even function. Do you realize that the Bible says that Sanballat actually decided to assassinate Nehemiah although the wall was complete but he had not even hung the gates and the doors. But he knew if we don't take out this man he is going to hinder us from doing what we have always wanted to do against Jerusalem and against the temple. Look at two or three people next to you and tell them, beware of the planes of honor. And there are many planes of honor these days where you are lured into things to assassinate you. I will not repeat my testimony, but you remember I did give my testimony here of how when I came to Portland, Oregon, we had come here, my wife and I, several months, we were praying and fasting, doing spiritual warfare, targeting all strongholds. We went into all Oregon and actually all the borders with different states, doing prophetic acts and pouring oil. But we were coming and going back to Texas. And then when we decided to come, it appeared that the enemy knew that we were coming. So the first spirit that I fought against was the spirit of assassination. And if you have never heard the testament, I'm, I'm not going to give it in detail, but I literally encountered a man 4 a.m. in the morning. That time I was trying to catch up with Reverend Moses Mbogwa because we were supposed to meet at the airport. And we were supposed to fly to California where our cars, I mean, you know, you know, Sacramento, where our cars had been shipped because they could not ship them to Portland, Oregon because it had snowed heavily. And at 4 a.m., I'm on Highway 84 going to the airport. And here comes a big truck. And I had borrowed a small car from a student who had come from California. Her name was Ruth Kinywa. A small Honda. It's the one that was driving. And the plan was to leave it somewhere you know, near the airport and then we are going to fly and then come back. And here comes a big truck that came straight at me. And it hit me several times with the intent of actually throwing my little car over into the river. I don't even know how I survived. And when I finally got out and I saw the man and he looked at me and he was huge and so vicious. Looked like he was actually a single-eyed man. In America, when you get involved in an accident, the tradition is that you come out and the first thing you're supposed to ask, are you okay, right? He didn't ask me whether I was okay. He asked me, what's your name? 
I said, I thought you were supposed to ask me whether I'm okay. He said, no. What's your name? And immediately the Holy Spirit told me I was, I mean, I'm, you know, I was not supposed to tell him my name. And of course, the rest of the story, I'm not going to say a lot. But he finally figured out that he could actually get my name. Maybe he had been given a particular name to finish. And when I looked on his side, he actually had a gun. So he was ready to do the job. And he said, can I see your insurance? And he went ahead and gave me his. So give, giving him the insurance that I had, he looked at it and he frowned. And he said, you are not Ruth. Because remember, I was driving Ruth's car. So which insurance am I going to give him? He said, you are not Ruth. What is your name? I said, you asked for insurance. There you have it. And to cut a long story short, he got so frustrated and he just sped away like crazy. I did not know that Ruth at that time, the Holy Ghost had awoken her 3 a.m. and said, pray for apostle. And my wife, had dreamt two days before attending my funeral. And she was praying and fasting. I'm not saying this to scare anybody. But I'm just trying to say this. If the devil can take you out, if you are doing an important work of building the wall, he will try to. But I'm here to tell you we have the blood of Jesus. We have the name that is above every name. The Bible says there is no weapon fashioned against you that shall prosper. In other words, they will plan, but their plans will come to nothing. Can I remind you, child of God, every place that you go to, you are not alone. The hosts of heaven, the angels of God, they go with you. Because the angels of God are so many. The Bible says every child has been assigned an angel. And simply because you grew up does not mean your angel was withdrawn. Actually, your angel has been given more support by other angels that are called warrior angels. Let me suggest to you the reason why some of you are still here. It is because you have brushed shoulders against the spirit of death. Some of you did not even know. They tried to assassinate you. But the reason why you are here, even they themselves cannot understand. There is a heavenly cover upon your life. The hand of God has been upon you. The blood of Jesus has destroyed their plans. And I want to declare this. Any Nehemiah that is building the wall, you will finish the wall and you will live long after that. Because there is God who protects those that he has called. Listen to me. If God has given you a job, he will enable you to finish that job as long as you follow him. And therefore I want to declare there is no weapon fashioned against you that shall prosper. I have had many testimonies of people that were sent to take out God's servants. And by the time they got there, they became blind. Sometimes it is not even the blindness that you think. It's just like they don't recognize you. Heaven is on your side. And I want to declare to every spirit of assassination, it will not succeed in its work. You will continue to do what God has called you to do. Because God is on your side. Number two, kind of assassination is called character assassination. Look at somebody next to you and tell them character assassination. The Bible says Sanballat and his friends, they wrote a letter. And what was the letter about? It says that you are now pretending, you are now announcing yourself to become king. And you are rebelling against the king. So please come, let us di discuss about these things, how we can help you. Because the news are out there that the reason why you are leading this project of building the wall is to make a name for yourself. 
It's called character assassination. Why is it called character assassination? It is because when someone wants to destroy your name, they are actually trying to kill you. Character assassination is the malicious and unjustified harming of a person's good report. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 1 that a good name is better than riches. In other words, some of you let me open your eyes and tell you the reason why the enemy wants to destroy your good reputation it is because he knows very well as long as people trust you and they love you and they believe in you, you will have influence over them. There are people today who are fighting the spirit of character as a nation and usually that spirit goes ahead of them. Before they enter into certain places, the spirit has gone ahead to destroy their good name. There are people who cannot get married today. Why? It's the spirit of character assassination. I have heard, especially if they see like the brother is eyeing you, they come and say, hey, do you know that sister actually has two children, but she has been hiding? I want to prophesy this. When they say she has two children and she has been hiding, the brother is going to say, I was actually looking for one that has two children. How do you dismantle the spirit of character assassination? Because it is everywhere. Especially some of you. It appears like just before you get somewhere, the spirit has gone there and destroyed your resume. Some of you it is in the place of work. Some of you it is in your assignment. I don't know where it is. Some of you are in, in business. And the reason why you've been having several visitations from the county is because someone has given them some information. And so they are coming looking for something. Let me see your staffing. Let me see your this and that. It's a character assassination spirit. Because the enemy knows that if people trust you, they are going to listen to you. You see, false accusations and misrepresentations and untrue scandals are weapons that are used by the spirit of character assassination. False accusation. In other words, you are accused for something that you did not do. Let me see by show of hand how many of you, since you were born until now, you have been accused of something that you know you did not do. Raise your hand. I just want to see how many angels are in this church today. Everybody. And how many of you have realized that when you are fighting that spirit, sometimes you don't even have enough words to defend yourself? Right? Yeah. Sometimes you don't even have enough words. Like, where do you begin? Because this spirit, what it does, it makes sure that the scandal or the misrepresentation, and some of you, it is just a misrepresentation. You said something, it was taken out of context. Let me tell you something. Every time you say something, there are three groups of people that will utilize what you say. How many groups? Three. The first group, it is the group that hears what you say. So when they report it, they are going to report it as you say it. Thank God for people who report accurately. I declare may your life be surrounded by people who report accurately. Amen. I pray that God is going to give you people who are going to quote you verbatim for what you said. 
But that's the first group. And for some reason, if you are fighting against the spirit of character assassination, this might be a minority among the groups that are going to listen to you. People who report well that that is what you say. Because there is a number two group. This is the group that hears what you did not say. The first group, they heard what you said. The second group, when you said it, they heard what you did not say. How many of you know that it is easy for people to hear what you didn't say? If someone says, would you please come and help us? And then you respond, I am sleepy. The person who hears what you did not say will go and say, she said she cannot help. But how many of you know that you did not say that you can't help? You just said what? You are sleepy. It doesn't mean you cannot help. Let me see by a show of hand how many angels versus human beings I have here. How many of you have ever said something and, and, and people heard what you did say? And then number three group are people who never heard what was said. But they will still want to report. They never heard. If they were taken to court and asked, what did you hear? They say, well, I just heard, someone told me, I heard from this and this, because so and so said this and this. Did you hear the letter from Sanballat, how it says? He says, Gesham says. Did you hear that? Yeah. It's a reported information. How accurate can a reported in, you know, information be? Nehemiah had to dismantle the spirit of character assassination by trusting in the power of truth. Because he said, all that you have said is not true. Let me submit this to you and tell you, if you are fighting against that spirit, you got to believe the power of truth is more powerful than the spirit of error. It may take some time before people know between the truth and the untrue. But if you keep on standing, the truth will always win. Let me tell you, in life, if there is something that you cannot successfully bury, it is the truth. The truth will always come out. One weapon you need to arm yourself with when you are dismantling the spirit of character assassination it is the weapon called silence. Look at three or four people next to you and do this. How many of you know that when you are being scandalized and people are saying things that are not true, you are tempted to speak for yourself? Yeah? You are tempted to speak. Now, some of you, I know you are looking at me here and you are looking like uh, the Virgin Mary, but I know you can speak one thing or two. In fact, some of us are still being delivered from the volume of words that we should speak. Especially when you see someone holding like this. How many of you know that they can release? Do they know who they are trying to mess with? But when you are fighting against this spirit, sometimes when you speak and try to defend yourself, you are actually throwing more gas into the fire. I was told this a long time ago when I was coming up in the ministry by my spiritual papa, Bishop Thomas Mode. He said when people are trying to assassinate you in your area of character, throwing things at you that are not true, it's like they are throwing mud at you. And how many of you know that the easiest and the quickest 
mind that comes to us when mud is thrown at us is to do what? To get rid of it. But what happens when you do that? You smear it more. Uh, some of you are looking at me here and some of you are online. The last one month, you are trying to rub off some, some mud. Something has been said against you. But Bishop told me when I was coming up in the ministry, he said, a wise person is not going to mess with the mud. You will allow it to dry. Look at three or four people and tell them, you need to allow it to dry up. How many of you know that when it dries up, it's going to fall off on its own? Or if you will have to use an effort, it's just going to be a finger. There is a God of vengeance who can speak on your behalf. Some of you come from families that are full of hatred. They have tried to scandalize you. And the reason why a scandal is dangerous, it is because the way it is put together, anybody coming from outside will say, it is true, I can see. This guy is building the wall, and he has actually hired prophets to say that he's the king. Sometimes they make it so, I mean, it appears real. Nikweli. Mm. Alikula. Nikweli. Number three is spiritual assassination. Would you believe what Sanballat and his friends did? They hired false prophets. Wakawalipa pesa to pronounce false prophecies against Nehemiah. That's how bad Sanballat can be. He can go to any length of trying to assassinate you. And if he cannot get you through physical assassination or character you know, assassination, he will try to come in the spirit. The Bible says there was this man by the name Shemaiah, the son of Deliah. He was a priest and a prophet. And he comes to Nehemiah and says, hey, they are trying to kill you. And then he says, I know you are a spiritual man and you love the temple. Let's go to the temple and close the doors behind. How many of you agree with me that the safest place that there could be is in the temple? Hey, wave your hand. But the Bible says, he had been hired so that he may kill him in the temple. I don't want to scare you, but look at three or four people and tell them, even in the temple, it's not very secure. Even in the house of God. Even in the place where we worship. Even in the ministry. Where people are supposed to have the love of Christ. Christ. Where people are supposed to forgive one another. Where people are supposed to pray for one another. Where people are supposed to actually support what God is doing in the lives of others. In the temple, especially these days, it is not safe. Let us close the doors behind the temple. And the Bible says Nehemiah perceived... The God, I mean, the Lord had not sent him. And he had pronounced evil prophets. I mean, evil prophecy. And the Bible says, not only that, there was another prophetess there by the name Noadiah. Nehemiah does not say what this prophetess had done. But it appears she was also hired. He says, God, remember the prophetess Noadiah. And he also says, and other prophets. Goodness, a group of prophets. Spiritual assassination. If Nehemiah was an African, I want to assure you, he would have been assassinated spiritually because Africans love the prophetic. 
It is an easy prey for Africans. That's why we have a problem sometimes even in our churches. Because you are teaching people the word, but they are still have, they still have the appetite for the prophetic. And they submit themselves to weird spirits. I know that there are true prophets who have true prophetic gifts, but I need to warn you. There are some powers and some anointings when you come under them, they kill you spiritually. They get you out of your place and you are left with this weird thing. People that have been called to the ministry, you look at their lives and they have been destroyed by the so-called prophetic. If you want to get hold of an African real quick, tell them that says the Lord. But look at three or four people and, and tell them you need to be careful. They can snap you out of your place. You need to be careful about your destiny because not every voice that says that says the Lord is speaking on behalf of God. As I conclude, let me say this. One of the things that really helped Nehemiah was the spirit of discernment. If all that I do in this church is to prophesy to you, but I don't teach you the word, I don't show you the truth, you have every reason to walk out of this place and say, let me save my life. Because sometimes these false prophecies, they manipulate a lot. Before I take my head to somebody, so-called a prophet, I want to check out their character. I want to know after they prophesy, how do they live? I want to check their track, their track story, their track history. There is no way someone, it doesn't matter how accurate you are, you can actually call out my bank account number. But if you are a womanizer and you are a manipulator, I'm not going to submit myself to that spirit. They hired prophets against Nehemiah because they thought, okay, if we cannot get Nehemiah on either side you know, ground, let's use the temple. Let's use the house of God. Let's use the prophetic gifts. But Nehemiah designed and said, I know you want me to stop building the wall, but I will continue building the wall. Let me declare this as we go to pray. I don't know why God gave me this message, but I want to declare this. Any spirit that is sent to assassinate your destiny must fail. It will not succeed. I told you this ministry is about callings. It is about destinies. It is about what God has called people to do. We may not be successful in many areas, but I have pledged to God, anybody that comes through that door and they have the call of God upon their lives, it is our responsibility to make sure what God has called them to do has worked. We have such an anointing in this house. Any false and any counterfeit spirit cannot survive under this anointing. I guarantee you, there is a prophetic grace in this house to put people on their path of destiny. And as long as you are obeying God, I want to declare no assassination. Whether it is physical, whether it is character, whether it is spiritual, that is going to prevail over your life. You will build the wall and do what God has called you to do. Everybody stand on your feet in Jesus' mighty name as we go to pray right now.